Hello and welcome to episode 42 of Anne and Steve Talk Stuff, where an artist and an economist walk into a podcast to talk about strange things that make the world go round. Stephen, how are you getting on? I'm good. I'm good. And it's uh, week two of term. So uh, we're, we're uh, you know, busily engaged in telling people where things are um, yes. and all that. And online lectures are happening and tutorials and stuff. So it's good. It's nice to have... Um, contact with the students but you know everything's mediated through microsoft teams so mm. you know, it's fine uh, we're, we're getting on with things um it's not ideal but we're doing our best and what's really interesting is just how much better we are as an organization at doing this so it's roughly this time last year we all switched to online stuff and people were like what is this thing called zoom and people didn't have cameras on their computers and nobody had a microphone and you know everyone's broadband was essentially composed of twine and all of this kind of stuff <laughs> and so uh yeah and now we kind of know we all know how to do it and i i think that all the learning that we've taken from the last couple of months or maybe the year like it'll all stay there when the pandemic recedes you know mm -hmm. like we've basically moved the entire organization, which is a massive organization. So UL has 16 and a half, 17,000 students, 2000 staff. Um, you know, it's, it's probably the largest economic entity in the region mm -hmm. in terms of headcount. Yeah. And we just moved the entire thing forward about 15 years. Wow. And we did it in the middle of a pandemic, you know, so. Ne yeah. Needs must. Needs must. And then it happens. How are you? Yeah. I'm good yeah I'm good um obviously if you're tuning in this randomly yeah Stephen's the economist and I'm the artist and uh we sometimes introduce ourselves but uh oh I didn't do that sorry well sorry. I actually didn't ask you who you were but um actually here's the thing where 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 can people find your writing is there like one particular place or is it generally at the currency or yeah so I used to store all of my writings on my personal website stephenkinsa.net and then I got too busy to, to do all that. So now mm. I don't bother with that anymore. So basically the stephenkinsler.net thing is just a kind of a CV that I haven't updated in about a year. Okay. <laughs> so because um, I've done a lot of stuff in the last year. No, um, no. I, I, the, the place to find my sort of non-technical writing. So I write for, I write books, I write journal articles, um, but I also do, do sort of, um, I guess you'd call it opinion analysis kind of stuff. You're full of opinions. The currency dot news. So yeah, you, you'll find, I, I mean, it's not necessarily an opinion in the sense that I don't kind of go, you know, I don't like the color of sheep. Here's why the color of sheep is wrong or the government <laughs> must do something. I don't tend to do that. It's more like I have analyzed the number of sheep um, and it's, <laughs> it seems like there are too many sheep over here and we should probably try some kind of policy to, to reduce the number of sheep there and maybe increase it over there. Okay, like so for all your sheep news, Google Stephen Ginsla. And non-sheep news. And non-sheep oh, news. Yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of the currency.news actually because it's, it's um, we started off, the two guys that, that started, Ian Kyo and Tom Lyons, they both worked with me in the Sunday Business Post. So I was a columnist there for four years. And then before that, I wrote for The Guardian and I wrote for The Irish Independent. So I've been writing a weekly column for about 12 years now, um, which is its own weird thing actually because very, people tend not to do that. I mean, it tends not to be the case that um, that uh, like people will write for a year maybe and then they'll stop, particularly right. in my um, in my my game of academia. Um, so that's yeah, it's quite a it's quite a different thing actually. Um, and uh, I, I I don't know that there are very many very many other academics doing what I'm doing, but. Uh, that's because I'm just weird. But the, the, the most, the most um, interesting thing about it is in the middle of, uh, you know, 2019, <clears throat> the lads decided we're going to set up an online journalism thing that charges people money. And I just, I'm so impressed with them. They put their lives on the line, their houses on the line, the whole bit in the middle of it all. They were being sued by Dennis O'Brien. <laughs> oh, and fun. They, um, they did it all. And the product they have produced is incredible. Um and I learned so much just, I learned, I learned a lot about bravery, actually. I learned mm. a lot about, um, a lot about bravery. I learned a lot about um, risk. I, I learned a lot about business and I just learned a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to call these people some of my best friends and they are, 
to see what they did and how they did it and when they did it. And that they came out the other side of it all. Uh, they were sued for defamation by Dennis O'Brien, a billionaire, notably litigious billionaire. And they won uh, in the high court. They were, then, and then, then they, got, they all got banned. So I used to do loads of radio work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd be on the Today FM maybe twice a week um, and all that kind of stuff. That's and, very limerick of you. You'd be on the Today FM. Yeah, the Today FM, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> The Today FM, News Talk and all that. And, 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 the, um, the News Talk, the News Talk. The News Talk, the News Talk. And they, um, uh, when we launched the currency, uh, these are these are um, uh, radio stations that are, that are owned by Communicorp, which is owned by Dennis O'Brien, and there was owned by Dennis O'Brien, and they um, decided to ban us all. So they oh, banned us yes. from uh, the radio. Um, you know, so it, it is interesting. Every so often I'll find News Talk journalists talking about the need to fight for free speech um, on Twitter and I don't typically engage with them because it's it's not their fault they're they're in a highly precarious um, employment situation where they can get fired with a click of a click of a, a, a set of fingers and so for me to go listen <laughs> you've no claim to upholding free speech in any way given that you actively dampen it with your within your organization um, that would feel what calling them out for hypocrisy would feel nice for five seconds but you have to remember they, they didn't make the call they're employees yeah. um and so it's not really worth doing so but they've banned uh, they've only banned two two publications uh, off communicorp uh, the irish times and the currency yes so, um, yeah and you know what uh we well, another brave thing because lots of people there you know they 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 you know it's part of their personal brand or whatever not necessarily myself but you know took a decision as a team that unless the Irish Times were going to be reinstated that we weren't, weren't going to do any radio with them and um, yeah I, it's, 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 it's it, again another very interesting you know people say oh the business you know it's all just shilling it's, it's really not um, we often get very often get, because, we, because it charges a lot of money like it's 250 quid to join this thing Do you know there's right. thousands of subscribers now but um, people assume that it's kind of some elitist uh, rag. And the, the, you know, yesterday there was a piece showing how Pfizer, the exact corporate structure that Pfizer has and how it moves money around the world, you know, which is, you could argue is a really left-wing thing to do because it's like exposing the actual mechanics of global capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, but it's not really left-wing or right-wing. It's just journalism actually. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just been great. Anyway, that's a very long-winded way of saying, read the currency.news. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that's I didn't realize I was like doing an ad for them there. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> caught myself. I apologize. No, it's um, all. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's, well, this is the thing. It's episode 42. This is what I thought was kind of special as we go into this episode. It's episode 42. Yes. And you and I are both 42. And this is the, right. only, this is the only time this will ever happen. Oh my God. Wow. We're all the same age. The, we're the podcast. all the same age until yeah. next year. Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna get past forty three, aren't we? Yeah, we'll be forty three next week. So we're forty three next week. <laughs> <laughs> we're aging before our own eyes, Anne. We're aging yeah, before but our the, own eyes. Our next, by the time of our next birthday, will be a good. Will I'd say we'll be safely? I don't want to do maths now. Oh my god, on the radio, but you know, on on podcast, but we'll probably be into our seventies or eighties. Yeah, that's I don't right, know. That's right. Something like that. Something like okay. that. Um. Yeah, I I and this morning actually something I've, I've been doing uh oh by the way if you want to know about me just google and blake limerick you'll find out the stuff i do anyway um the point being okay well i should really give one plug i do another podcast for the limerick post with emma langford called the limerick it's lady awesome uh, wow, awesome i love it i love it i i can't listen to podcasts anymore because I, I i don't go anywhere i always i associate podcasts with motion so yes. i only listen to two podcasts and yours is one of them oh well, thank you very much. It's great. Um, it's really good. What's it? I was going to. I'm gonna a fan. Well, stop it. Um, That's true. <laughs> well, well, as we we always fall into a bit of mutual appreciation on on this podcast. So right back at you. Um, I have taken up. Um, you know, I've always I've always swam all year round in the winter and in wild water wherever I can. But obviously, I'm limited to five k now. And the last week or so, pretty much every day, I've been swimming in the city. 
in a oh. little spot. Yeah, and it's been really cool. It's down near King John's Castle. There's a place uh, called Verdant Place, which Verdant means green, but it's a big mm-hmm. load of steps. And it's um, it could be very beautiful. It could be gorgeous. It's it's already quite lovely position wise, but it it could do with a bit of love and a bit of. Uh, we actually did bring a sweeping brush down there one day because it was someone's birthday, and we were kind uh-huh. of wanted to be a bit nice for the swim. But um, anyway, it's it's part of the reason I was a little bit late getting online this morning with you, Stephen. And why, if you're watching this on YouTube, my hair is a bit wet. Uh, I was a bit late getting out of the river. So um, yeah, there you go. Wow, that's um, awesome cold but refreshing yeah i i i, I just leave you off <laughs> I, just couldn't. I just couldn't i just the thought of it is just i'm actually i don't know if you noticed but my my body language has completely changed when you were talking my my shoulders are currently somewhere inside my own ears um as i'm well, it's, listening it's, to you talk about jumping into freezing cold water it's about four degrees at the moment but it you know it's not about i it's about just getting in it it's about feeling a lot less trapped than than I do within my. Fi- well, I have a very nice five k. I have to say, I'm very lucky with it. But um, being able to get into the river does make it seem bigger. Um, yeah. But yeah. but but I my job as always to stay on the old topic, uh, and we do have a topic every every week. And this obviously is something that has come. It has been in the consciousness for some time, but it became came into sharp relief last week. So Limerick's going to be the first city in Ireland ever to have a directly elected mayor, um, which is going to, um, as as random citizen person, which I am, uh, who's read a little bit, but you've obviously, as always, Stephen will have read a whole lot more. Um, it's going to be a huge effect on local government. It's going to change it forever and, and could potentially have a big effect on the entire country as the example is possibly followed uh so that's my like two cents and um like i've always been kind of as a citizen being like okay there's a mayor but i didn't vote for them or whatever so i think there's always been this kind of um uh, interest in voting for your own mayor and we, we've never we vote for our councillors but we don't vote for our mayor they do that what what does it mean what does it mean for you, Stephen? Well, I guess um, like the way to think about uh, the way to think about this is firstly to put it in, in its international context, right? So Ireland has one of the most centralized government funding systems in the developed world, and there's only Ireland and Turkey. So ninety-seven percent of all funding really flows from or goes to the central government up in Dublin. Uh, very, very, very little amounts are levied by by local authorities, and they basically kind of just keep things t- tipping over. People assume that we have too many of them. By you know, if you internationally, if you just like add up the number of you know people who work in local authorities and like divide them by um, and just divide them by like the the number of them, Ireland has very few. Uh, so you know, we, we are we have an underfunded, under resourced local local. Um, authority sector. Now, some of that is because in other countries like Norway, for example, local authorities actually take care of health and they take care of education, whereas obviously that's done at the central level here um, and, and through the religious um, systems. So, you know, mm. people probably don't realize that much of the state's expenditure on things like health and education it actually still happens through religious um, bodies. So we would spend over a billion euros a year on um, you know uh, health and education that actually is directly paid to, to religious bodies. Um, what? Which is, yep, I did. I did. Yeah, over a billion, um, and directly like for that, that just for charitable services. That's not for for, for anything else. I mean, it's just it's a quirk of our of our system. You know, and it's neither neither positive nor negative. It's just a, it's just a statement. It's just because uh, uh, um, there's all yeah, there's all this thing. Oh, we've removed. I mean, there's a concept out there we have removed church from from state or we are out of education but it's not remotely the case no i mean if, if you're sending your child to sort of you know saint mary's you, you you won't see a religious um uh on the corridors um you know teaching your kids very unlikely but the reality of the situation is that that very very likely that that is owned the, the property is owned by a diocese you mm-hmm. know uh, particularly if it's a primary school or secondary school, um, or 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 indeed um, um, uh, 
a society of nuns. But anyway, the, the, the important thing here is to think about, and maybe that's for another day, uh, the sure, important sure. thing is to think about what local authorities do. So they're supposed to be, the idea is to have government spending as close to government action as possible. So mm-hmm. if you, in Norway, I, I just picked that randomly. Let's, let's I was stick just, with Norway. I was just talking to a Norwegian just before we came on, which is <laughs> why. Um, so th- th- you pay your taxes, you pay a local tax to a local authority, and they spend that thing on your behalf on things like health and education. Mm. We don't really do that here. We pay a property tax and there are local rates that are also paid. And a percentage of the property tax is, is paid back, if you like, through the revenue to the local authority. And um, the, our, our elected councillors can raise or lower our property tax by 15% every year. And in fact, they very bravely have raised the property tax recently, um, I think two years ago, with, to fund um, increased capital spending here in the city, which is a very, very good thing. Anyway, the, the, the issue with local government has always been that it's small, it's deeply divided, and even if it wasn't, it's incredibly, incredibly underpowered. So a county councillor is very, very, like they don't really have the power to do much. Mm-hmm. Um, their local authorities in themselves don't have the power to do much. Um, and that means that the citizens are far less engaged in what, in the activity of this of, of the council, because of course they can't do much. So, you know, ultimately I'm not that engaged in Norwegian politics because Norwegian politics fundamentally can't help me or hurt me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really engaged in UK and US politics precisely because they can't hurt me. Yeah. Right. Um, and similarly, I'm not that engaged in local Limerick politics, even though I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I was about to say I'm from Limerick. Um, I guess I have another 25 years to go before I can say I'm from Limerick, but, um, you know, <laughs> I live in Limerick and my kids are from Limerick. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it's, it's hard to stay engaged with that stuff. So along comes the campaign for the directly elected mayor of Limerick. And I'm and and people were like, this is terrible. No, no, no. And I, I was an enthusiastic, vocal, public supporter of this from the minute that it started. I did radio debates with people. I thought it was, I think it, you know, the idea was, oh, this is just another snout in a bigger trough. Nothing's gonna change. And my argument to counter that was um, if you set this up correctly, the person that you hire to do this, the person that you elect to do this will have the, will have a democratic mandate to take over the, take over the functions of um, uh, much of not just the county's chief executive, but also the, the central government and actually argue for more resources, right? Um, and will be able to command a kind of uh, power within you know, central government that other mayors will not be able to do. So the the kind of functions that we're talking about, right, are, you know, the, the, this directly elected mayor, um, he or she or they are going to serve for seven and a half years, the first one. It's mm. going to be, um, it's going to be this year, the end of this year, uh, that we will elect them. And they're going to have, you know, power over like housing, water services, management environment agriculture health welfare like it's going to be quite a large portfolio um the the media have kind of focused on the salary of this person they're going to get 130 grand a year Mm -hmm. um which is a lot of money um uh and they're going to have a couple of advisors and all that kind of stuff but if you think that they're going to have a command of you know a much larger budget um if they if they manage the budget well it should be okay I'm also quite a fan and the media had said, oh, seven and a half years, it's going to be a disaster. Well, it's, it's a five-year term and um, you only have two options, right? Two and a half years or seven and a half years. I like seven right. and a half years because two and a half years is very, very difficult to get anything done. You basically spend two years setting up an office. But with seven and a half years, you can actually move maybe two or three things forward. Um, c- cities are hard to move that way. So I think it's a very, very good idea. Um, and I also think that it will create a channel through which people can uh, ask questions, air their views, get things changed. And it's somebody who's directly elected. So, you know, you and I will elect that person and mm-hmm. it'll be their job to go and see, well, there's no park in um, Maru or there's no park in, in, in Capamore. Put a park there. And it'll be their job to go, geez, we should put a, we, we should put a park there. Mm-hmm. It'll be their job to argue for those things. 
I think that's very powerful. If we get the right person, I think it's very, very powerful. So it's the just the first term is seven and a half years. And yes, after that, and the next term would be five. Be five after that. So it's actually allowing to establish the office. It's allowing yeah, to establish exactly the right. role. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and there, like, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this. Um, what's happened? Jenny talked about it a lot at the time, and um, like, and now obviously with this announcement last week that it's going to happen this year. Um, like, there's, a, I suppose, there's a big concern around democracy, which is mm-hmm. super important. And I was having Jenny having say run last year and and seeing what a campaign is. How how can you run a campaign if we're still in similar situation in eight nine months time? If you can't knock on doors, and I mean, uh, no matter who, no matter what the campaign, I, I somebody recently said to me like, oh, this campaign won't be about knocking on doors. Every campaign, yeah, is the most effective thing you can do is knock on a door. I think that's right, and talk to people like that is that's what's won any referendum that's what's won any election. Yep. What totally do people agree. say? I don't know that person. I don't know that politician, but I see them around, or they knocked on my door, so I'm voting for them. Um, mm. How? Why this year? Why not push it out into a time when they can campaign? I don't know. I mean, like to be honest, it's 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 neither here nor there if they do it in quarter four of 2021 or quarter one of 2022. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. if they turn around and they go, I think I think the idea was that we would have the majority of the population of the country vaccinated by that point. Yeah. You know, um uh there have been changes in the supply of the vaccine, which mean that it that might not be true, you mm. know. Um, and so they may turn around and say, listen, what we're actually going to do here is, you know, push it to, I don't know, March of 2022. That's grand. Mm-hmm. Like, that's grand. We, we've had a century of lo- local government, more than a century of local yeah. government. Um, and before that, actually, in the in the 19th century, in the 20th century, there were the same, roughly the same structures, in fact, um, attained. Like, there was a planning office in 1850 in Limerick. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, um, I, 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 and we know this because we still have the plans. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I suppose I'm not that worried about it if it doesn't happen in December. It'll be grand. Like, the, yeah, the, I was just wondering you know. what, what the kind of, dare I say, the, I mean, you, you want this, you want, if you vote for a thing, so there was a, there was a referendum was the year before last, maybe must have been the year before last, because nothing happened last year, and uh, it, and Limerick voted to to have a directly elected mayor, and mm. obviously you don't want it to go on the long finger, but it seemed odd to to push it this year when this year just seems like like the, this time. I wouldn't even call it a year. This time seems so uh, just powerless around public campaigns or public anything. Um, yeah. And and there was this fear uh, that it's setting it up to fail because you can't have a proper campaign. I mean, what I mean, what 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 do you reckon that's? Um, no, I, I I know what you mean, but but I, I think there'll always be that fear. Yeah. Um, because it's a new thing, and the personality of the person who wins it will be a huge factor, mm. as well as their organizational ability. So you know, I think I think what's very important about this role, as opposed to almost any other role in the history of the state mm-hmm. in the, i mean in literally in the history of the state is there is no precedent for it when um when michael collins became the minister for finance yeah in a in a for a country that didn't actually legally exist yet there was a very very established precedent for what he would do in that office why because there is the Chancellor of the Exchequer. There's the Secretary of the Treasury. There's a whole bunch of other people whose job is to be the man with the money, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's grand. And, and oh, that's fine, right? But, but in this particular example, the, it, it, especially in the Irish context, which is quite different from the UK one, you know, with UK have had directly elected mayors, most notably in London and across, across the world, in fact. Um, uh, my colleagues in political science have sort of educated me in this. Um, you know, there have been many experiments tried of, you know, the idea is to bring direct democracy to people and re- re- re-engage them with their local, um, with, with local government. That's, that's what this is for. Um, but the actual mechanics of it, mm-hmm. right, the day-to-day of it, is not, they're all totally different. The way the office is structured, the powers of it, um, 
what like like is it simply the chief executive of the council's functions being transferred to this directly elected mayor yeah is it more is it less do they have you know like and and then with the formal powers that are enshrined in the act to give legislative underpinning to the to the mayor and row what, what what gray areas are is it okay for that person to walk into like for example let's say there's a road that's just been denied yeah mm-hmm. let's just to pick a totally non-typical example yeah <laughs> uh, hypothetical uh and the mayor has no power over roads because that's the national transport authority obviously mm-hmm. does the mayor rock up to the nta and say hey listen come on I am the directly elected mayor. Those people elected me. Mm-hmm. I need this sorted right now. Yeah. Does he or she or they step on the toes of the national politicians, the TDs? Mm-hmm. What about the local county councillors? Like these are the gray areas. I think where where the po- the personality of the, of the of the politician will matter a lot. Obviously, their own political stripe, but uh, and then their their kind of ability. Right. Because yeah. remember, it's not it, it, you can be an amazing politician, right? An amazing politician. And you don't have to be that good at running anything. Right. And, yeah. and so so po- a lot of politics is governance. It's making sure that something was done. Mm-hmm. It's not actually doing it. This has an executive function, which means it is your job to actually make the buses run on time. So like the there's a really strong need for somebody who doesn't view it as like a retirement home or yeah. like uh sort of a i'm just here to cut the ribbon kind of thing like the, there are ceremonial offices in this country and they're held by amazing people they are mm. they, and i don't denigrate them because ceremony is important ritual is important mm. um and I, uh, but but that's not what this role is this role is really really executive and if you're not somebody who really wants to get down into the weeds with this you know, uh, uh, I think I think I think the worry would be that, um, like many many times in Irish politics, a politician will 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 attain some office, and then effectively act as a commentator on that office. Right. Yes. They'll go. God, isn't that thing terrible? And you're like, you're the minister for that thing. You're like, yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Someone should really do something. You are literally that person. Yeah, you know, and people are screaming at the television. People being me are screaming at the television, going, <laughs> "Why aren't you doing the thing?" And they're like, eh, "Sorry, the thing seems to be broken." And the 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 difference between a ceremonial office, which is the current mayoral role, it's entirely ceremonial, right? Yeah. They they cut ribbons, they make things happen, they they go on trips abroad, they meet people, they wear the chain, all that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, it it has a very good function. And that function will still be there in in the new structure. They're going to be called like a speaker role. Mm-hmm. They're going to have like you know th- there'll be a speaker role there. But I think that in the coming election what I'll be looking for is what is your experience of doing things, being in charge of things, making things happen. Mm. I can imagine, for example, a celebrity candidate, right? Yeah. To, you know, somebody who's like, Oh my God, you know, that person's amazing. You know, I saw them, you know, in a film or I saw them, you know, on a pitch or I saw them doing, doing, I mean, doing amazing things. Sure. And, and, and you, you know, that person and you're like, wow, that's great. And then you go, have you ever made a boss run on time? yeah have you how many people did you have working for you when was the last massive crisis that you dealt with Mm. what's your record on these things that's what i'm going to be looking for seriously and i'm i'm i will be very 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 active in holding everyone's feet to the fire you know if, if, if it's holding a debate or you know, listening to people or maybe they will have them on the podcast. I don't know, mm. whatever, the, the, whatever we do, right. The, 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 the point about it will be for me really, really clearly to go like, you know, it's not the presidency, right. No. Um, it's not the presidency. It, it, it's much closer to a ministerial role, but yeah. really it's more like the chief executive of a company role. Because you're right. actually in charge of the local authority. Like you, you're, it is literally your job if there's a sewer blocked to mo- make sure that, you know, like you, you have power over water services. Yeah. Um, if there's a flood, what are you going to do? 
Like these are the kinds of questions I'm going to ask. And it can't be, oh, geez, we're going to go on the media and say, oh, you know, it's terrible. The government up there in Dublin, they should really do something. No, no. you're in them. Yeah. That is you, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's that thing. Um, and I will be really, 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 really strong on this i won't be having any guff from anyone now people have to you know they govern and they you know they they, they um what's the, the, the phrase they, they they campaign in poetry you'll mm. have to have a bit of that right of course yeah. no problem with the vision thing big fan of it in fact but i really will be asking <clears throat> how many people have you ever had work for you i really will be asking when was the last time you had to take a tough decision um and how did you argue for that decision what what were your what were your choices and if it's like well you know, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I w I once had to decide whether to go on the radio or the television. Uh, it, like it's, you, you know, it won't be, it won't be enough because real government, like real actual government, is all about the boring shit. It's yeah. all about like you're listening to somebody going, Jesus, this is this awful thing has happened to me. What what do I do? And then like trying to find something to help them yeah right? and, and it's a different role to a td a td chocodola is a mes messenger of the people right you're not a messenger of the people that's no. not your job your job is to make the services work for the people mm -hmm. it's a totally different situation it's fascinating actually genuinely fascinating role um but i've i i think that we there's so much risk involved and 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 you said it right just right out like we're the first one mm. if we make a balls of it we're going to wreck it for Waterford yeah, <laughs> and Cork yeah. and Dublin. Uh, yeah. I mean, but, but, but we should say, um, just for people who don't know, you know, there were plebiscites in other cities. Everyone else turned it down. Yeah. Limerick said, yes, we're going to do it. I think, yeah. I actually think it's because there was a very active campaign here. Local, local people really got together with it. But I also think the fact that they'd, Limerick people had seen the benefits that come from amalgamating the, 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 the city and county councils, mm -hmm. um, uh, they, they'd seen the benefit that had happened from that. We, we'd had the city of culture, we'd had the European thing. Like there mm -hmm. were a couple of, oh, we had the granny. Uh, there were these, I think I think we're, we, we're a bit more coherent actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you look at the difference between Cork city and Cork county politics, they're very, very, very different, very different entities, right? Um, whereas here it, it's, it's much more, um, I won't say it's uniform, that's not fair. But uh, the, the concerns are different. But this is not just a mayor for the city, right? Yeah. Like the mayor will be the mayor of Maroon okay. too, do you know? And Maroon and uh, and Cap Moore and, uh, you know, Newcastle West. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah. like, and this is the thing, I suppose, this is our little, our little space to talk stuff. Well, people do listen. And I mean, for people, I, both, neither of us have any stakes in this other than we are, just we, live we live yep. here. We live here. Um, and and we and we care about stuff. Um, but I suppose should you be listening to this and be a voter, I kind of the kind of questions to have about this or to have to have the information. I think this is really important what you're talking yeah. about. This isn't a mayor like we've ever seen before, and no and no. Um, this is not a, a what's it, a barbed comment, but no one who has been mayor of Limerick so far would have really the skills or the chops for this role because this is well, well they might but but it won't be from their role as mayor that's sorry that's I, what i mean that's what yeah. i mean i'm like i'm not that's not a comment on on them as as people but their experience of having been in the ceremonial mayoral yeah, role yeah yeah exactly is not a criteria for going vote for me i was mayor before and yeah. so i and so i think for for voters so yeah, it's a voter. As I said, we have no stakes. We have no candidates. No, we are no. not candidates. What should people be yeah. asking? Like, and I and I know you just said it. You did say it there a few minutes ago. Um, but I don't know if you wanted to break it down into a, a Stephen listicle. Step one. Um, what have you done in the past that will convince the people of your integrity? No leader, you can't be a leader without integrity, right? Um, step two, or question two, or whatever. Uh, tell us about your experience in running organizations and 
give us examples of really tough decisions that you had to make and why you made those decisions and how you argued for them afterwards. Part three or question three, um, if you're given the role, you have seven and a half years to do your job, what will be different at the end of the seven and a half years? And how will you make it different? Right? Those are the three things. Start from integrity. Have to start from integrity. This person, if there's any blemish on their character, anything like that, I'm sorry. I'm not interested in I'm not interested in 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 somebody who to attain high office in this country is to hold an honor that very, very, very few people have. Really very few people have. And I'm not talking about like being a vaunted straight shooter of one of these people, right? What I mean is like, are you someone, if we say, go do X, you will do it. X mm -hmm. might happen, you know, things might go wrong or whatever, but you're, you're actually going to do what you say, right? Or you'll try to do it. Second thing is all about, have you got the experience of running a large organization? Like this is, this is not like being a TD where the organization you run is like four people. You know, yeah. you've got your local office, you've got your doll office, you know, um, you, your, your basic job is, is, is you're responsible for a group of, let's call it 10 people. And you've got a bunch of volunteers who do stuff for you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, and I'm not denigrating the role of a TD in any no, way. No, no, no. Height of respect for anyone who attains um, um, elected office in any capacity. And I, I mean that quite seriously. No, what, what I mean is like, again, it's very different. Your job is to make the buses run. Right? Yeah. It's your actual job to, you're, you, 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 you're assuming all the functions that the current chief executive of the council has, or almost all of them, right? Um, uh, and so how do you think about that? You're going to be setting up a new organization, a new, a new office within that organization. How do you think about that, right? What, do you, what will you do? And if the answer is kind of hopey changey, sorry, like, not having it. I'm going to pin everyone down on, on super specifics. And I'll be, I'll, I will genuinely be quite engaged with that debate because I don't believe that, I don't believe that people will be well served. Um, we live in a time of extraordinary political cynicism and I really won't be having it. Like, you know, I mean, that I, you know, it's quite arrogant, actually. I, I'm not going to allow it to happen. But I mean, <laughs> not mean on it. my watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. No, I just as a citizen, right? And as, as somebody who, like, I, I, I really cared. I wasn't part of any individual group or anything mm -hmm. that, that sort of pushed the, the mayor thing forward. I just publicly stated my, my preference for a mayor as an experiment in democracy. But then that having publicly advocated for it, I then feel like I really need to see it through <laughs> to make yeah. sure it's the right thing is done. And Absolutely. I and again, I, I, do, I really want to say this. I'm not party political. Like I'm not saying, you know, the answer has to be Sinn Féin or it has to be Fianna Gael. Like it has to be independent. People will choose what they choose. The people's will is sovereign. That's what democracy is like. Yeah. But, and, we, and that will happen. Like it'll, like the usual political dynamics will play out in that sphere. Um, my, my, I'll tell you my fear. My fear is that we get someone who wants the job for the publicness of it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's grand at one level, but it's not the actual job. The job is the boring, nitty gritty. I mean, I mean, of course, the mayor should be on the radio every week. Of course, they should be communicating with the people. That goes without saying. My, my point is, that's not the only job. No. Right, a huge amount of this job is going to be, you know, um, the backroom stuff where you're trying to get some grey area sorted up in Dublin to deliver services for like a housing estate or something. It's yeah. going to be incredibly mundane, incredibly personal, incredibly um, in the weeds. And the kind of person who excels at that is the kind of person that you want mm -hmm. because that's how you actually get things done. Yapping about it on the radio is grand, but it doesn't change anything. No. I know because I've done it for years. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Tremere. <laughs> yeah, it changes nothing. So yeah, that th those are the kind of things I care I care a lot about. Uh, things that I don't care about um, the salary. Uh, you got you're responsible for hundreds of millions of euros of expenditure. Um, 130,000 sounds like a lot 
until mm-hmm. you remember that uh, 50% of it's going to be taxed away. Mm-hmm. And that person won't be able to work in any other field. Um, and uh, we, we will not be putting up with a nine to five person, right? They're going to, we, you know, that person's going to get, they, they won't be able to go for a pint without everyone being up in their grill, right? So, so, okay. so that's important. Um, there's going to be a big staff. I think we're going to spend like about a million quid a year on this person, right? Which again, sounds like a lot until you realize they're responsible for a much larger budget yeah. and we can get rid of them. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. The, if, 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 the, if the person turns out to be grossly incompetent, 75% of the councillors can vote, can vote to remove them. Okay. Um, and uh, if they turns out to be a disaster, we can all like, they can also be forced to resign in other ways. So like, I wouldn't be that worried about it. I just think as an experiment in democracy, it, it bears extraordinary scrutiny. And we, we as Limerick people should use the uh, election as a real like, chance to ask questions and air our views because we don't really get a chance to do mm. this you know i'd love to see and i don't again to your original point about like how are we going to do this i'd love yeah. to see like a thing where we have 500 people on a zoom call or something and they just ask questions yeah you know or i, I don't know how we might do it but yeah, yeah. I, I suppose I, the, the danger with that is that's immediately yes, assuming a certain privilege and certain access to of course, things, of course, which of course. the big yeah. issue around campaigning is not knocking on every door. Mm. Um, no, and 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 like as I said, I'm just asking asking the the, the question uh, because I, I you don't want something to be decided. Let's do this, and then three years later, we're still waiting for something to happen. Mm. Um, but it's just such a bad time and, and yeah. i'm very excited about it i'm very excited the prospect as in not in a positive or negative way like you i'm i'm, I'm not gonna i wasn't campaigning for it or anything myself uh, i was really fascinated by it and um and that and and, I, and it has fascinated me for many years the notion of having a mayor that we actually vote for like yeah. and, um but it is it is it, i'd be raging if it got messed up are manipulated um, because of the lack of ability to engage. And I suppose sure. when you like, even recently, I, I, I somebody contacted me recently about a, a, a kind of a theatrical project getting pushed forward. And I realized normally I would know all this stuff. I would I would know everything. I'd be meeting people. I'd be hearing. Yeah. rumblings whereas this news came to me and it was really good news by the way uh, just about a, a building and 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 stuff but i'm like uh i felt i was like i am so disconnected from my own my own mm-hmm. artistic community yeah. my own professional community let alone other people and i suppose that disconnection and disjointedness it's it's very hard to run a, um, a campaign and connect to people when we can't, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, that that's. I, I agree. I agree. And I, I, like, like I said, it would not upset me to learn that it was like mm, this time next year. Sure. That'd be grand. Sure. You know the but the it, the the issue is, and this is I kind of what uh, what sort of spurred the podcast theme is that the um, the powers of the the office were just kind of um, uh, published. Um, by yes. um, junior minister uh, Burke, um, and uh, we know we we also know that they're, they're doing citizens assemblies in Dublin around a direct, directly elected mayor, which is great, you know. Mm. And like there is, there are like real movements happening um, uh, in our democracy, which is not a bad thing because if the experience of the UK and the US is any indication, there are genuine threats to it and we shouldn't mm. imagine that they're not present here of course right? of there course. are fundamentally anti-democratic impulses mm-hmm. and movements happening in ireland too so this is an interesting bulwark against them too right yeah um, yeah yeah which is hopeful it's I, hopeful. I, i'm quite hopeful about it all and i'm looking forward to the to the engagement i have to say i, I think it's going to be great however it happens and i do hope it happens face to face um, once we all get the job and keep an, um, and keep an ear out for Stephen on the radio being a rottweiler having a go being a devil, at, <laughs> being a devil. Being um, a devil. and listen Stephen I better we better wrap up there uh, just actually 
when you were talking earlier about the currency, but I thought let's give the Twitter handle, which is simply at the currency. Um, do check it out. Support good independent journalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, a bit, bit like you and me. Um, but look, always we should get to- a sponsor. And we should get a sponsor. Yeah, Limerick Post, yeah. get on that. Are you listening, guys? We they should they get a do- sponsor. Who sponsored podcasts? Well, the Ormson House sponsored the Limerick Lady. So if oh, you're nice. listening and you're like, I want Anne and Steve to mention me every week for a number of weeks or whatever. Yeah, sponsor us. We're great crack. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we will still say what we want, though. Let's be clear. Yeah, that's fair. Also, probably can't do Ormston House because I'm on the board of House. The, well, I'm not. So I, uh, they're, they're sponsoring the Limerick Ladies. So uh, fair play yeah. to them. Indeed. But yeah, well, Stephen, get, yeah, Stephen has asked, sponsor us on that note. Uh, do you want to be the directly elected mayor? <laughs> sponsor us, Stephen. <laughs> terrible, terrible carry on by me. Uh, listen, words for sale. Listen, absolutely. Stephen, 42, 42 by 42. Here we are. Wow. Let's enjoy it. Let's distantly wave at each other and imagine a time this will never happen again, which is every other time. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> until next week, take care. Have a good one. I'll talk to you. Bye-bye.